want to know how you pick the right color for a jerk bait? When the fish takes the whole thing halfway up its mouth. What's going on everybody at the 153 family? As you know it, just like uh, been pretty routinely, my name is Matt Souders. I'm one of the pro staff for 153. And this week, kind of like you saw that clip at the very beginning, I'm going to be talking about the gear and stuff I use when I'm throwing jerk baits. Um, as everyone, I made a video a couple months ago talking about it. Most people know jerk baits are, you know, near and dear to my heart. I love that technique. It's one of my favorite technique. Uh, I throw it year round, but it really excels during that early winter, all through winter, the cold water phase, which we're still dealing with right now. Now, granted, Ohio just came out of uh, the area I'm in, just came out of a really cold, deep cold snap. Um, and I only had one body of water that I could actually fish yesterday that wasn't fully frozen over. And it was actually completely thawed out because it's naturally spring fed. So caught about seven or eight fish yesterday, nothing to write home about, no big size, but I tell you catching seven fish on what is still considered to be winter fishing in Ohio is fantastic. And I did it all on the 153 jerk bait. So this is what I actually caught them on, which you'll see, you saw in that video, but this is the 153 jerk bait in shad. Um, so it has that standard uh, bait fish profile, that little black dot right there in the middle, and then that uh, black back with the gray sides. And as you can kind of see in this light, it likes to be a little bit translucent. So when that light really hits it, it likes to flash. And I've just added a little red hook to the front. Um, I talked in that video, I'll either add them to the front or the back, kind of give that fish something to key in on. But we're gonna be talking about the gear that I like to use um, when throwing that. And what I like to use, this is a seven foot medium heavy, or excuse me, a seven foot medium power, uh, fast action tip, uh, rod and it's a legend uh st croix legend rod the legend tournament rod and the reason why i like using this rod and you can see it right there it'll be a little bit upside down but it's all right but the reason why i like using this rod is you know it's a super sensitive rod and like i've said in the past when you're throwing that uh jerk bait out there and you're really tossing them out there you know you're working in you know four to twelve feet of water depending on which water you're fishing it can get to where if you catch that video I did, I want to say a month or two ago, you'll see me throwing it. And in that video, I caught a fish and you actually, I could tell the fish was playing with it. And when I said playing with it, what fish will do sometimes with jerk baits, and you know, a lot of people have said this, you can watch videos on it, but from you, you really don't really completely understand it until you see it happen. What they'll do is they'll come up and they'll either trail swipe it, side swipe it. They're trying to disorient that fish before they actually hit it. So you know, with a super sensitive rod. And in that video, I was using a 13 fishing Omen 2 medium fast action tip rod, still a seven foot one, very sensitive rod. I just wanted to get a little bit more sensitivity in that rod so I can really know what the fish is doing with my bait. Um, because when you're feeling them, it, it sets you up for success. And what I mean by that is, you know that bite, if they're starting to play with it and side swipe it and hit it, you know they're gonna come up and they're, they're disorienting it. They're getting ready to attack it full on. So it lets you be prepared. Now, if you were, you know, getting a rod that's not as sensitive, I mean, people are throwing, have thrown jerk baits on rods that aren't sensitive at all and they catch fish, not an issue. But sometimes, especially with, you know, a jerk bait where it has those, those three different trebles on there, if that fish is coming up from the rear, like you saw in that video, and he's coming up here and he, let's see if I can get this without hooking myself, but he's coming, he's coming this way on it, or if he's coming this way on it, it's really, your main hook set will be one treble hook at first. Now, if he, like that one did, engulfs it and he gets up to here, I mean, obviously I have two trebles in him. But, you know, by being prepared for that bite, you can sit there and you can, you know, start to say, okay, that fish is playing with it. I know he's playing with it because he sideswiped it. He's hit it again. Okay, so he's going to be coming up and he's going to be taking that, that big hit on it. And that kind of prepares you so you're not caught off guard and do a big hook set and rip that bait away from it. Um, yesterday, I was myself, so someone who believes he knows quite a bit about throwing jerk baits and loves throwing jerk baits it was the second fish of the day i threw it out there i thought i felt he's playing with it i wasn't paying attention because i was on my phone because it's 2021 and i don't know how to put it down for a second and i ripped that bait right out of his mouth and then i let it sit there and he didn't come back for it he had committed he had got it ripped away from him and then he swam off and i had a, i lost that fish and i tried to throw it back in there and he wasn't there it took me about five or six more casts in a different area to get another one so that fish had completely decommitted and probably shut off for a little bit because he got spooked away from when i pulled it out of his mouth um because i did a bigger hook set on it so that's really it's setting yourself up for success for the simple fact that you're prepared and you can kind of calm yourself down uh, you start building that excitement 
So it's kind of counterintuitive to say you can calm yourself down, but you're building that excitement, but you know he's coming. And then when you really feel him hit it, that's when you can do a nice steady uh, pressure on that fish and let those trebles do their job. So moving on, what I'm using next. So for the reel, this is a uh, 151 Metanium DC high gear. So it's in a 7.2. Um, in my opinion, everyone's different, but in my opinion, the reel doesn't play a huge part in working this bait. And the reason being, when I'm throwing that bait out there, I'll cast it out there and I'll have my hand on here and I'll do a quick reel down to get that bait into my water column where I want it, which is why I like having a seven to two because I can do one or two swipes and I'll get her down. Um, but then after that, it's it's all just working that rod and then I'll reel, twitch, twitch, pause, and then I'll reel up the slack. Now there are times when I'm really aggressive with the jerk bait and I'm trying to go through like for instance, if I find a school or if I find a little wolf pack and I'm trying to get all of them, so I'll catch it, throw it back out there and I know they're feeding, they're feeding off a, a shad ball or a bait fish ball. I can throw it out there and really just work it. And that's when that reel comes into play a little bit more. But nine times out of 10, I'm working this bait on a twitch, twitch pause or twitch, twitch dead stick pause, which is anything in my opinion, seven seconds or more. I'm letting it sit there, not touching it. So like with this one, this is a floating jerk bait. You have your suspenders or your sinkings. So on a dead stick, you know, I'm throwing it out there, twitch, twitch, dead stick. I'm one, two, and I'm counting it down. And as I'm counting it down, that bait's either floating up. And with the good thing about the one, five, three baits is they kind of lean forward because they have a, a cast management system inside. So it leans forward. So as it's floating up, something like that, um, the suspending ones will stay suspended after it's, it's big, uh, uh, dart. So it'll stay suspended. And sometimes you'll get fish hitting it on the suspend and that dead stick, or if it's a sinker, they'll, it'll start sinking down like this. And that all mimics the sinking and the floating mimic a wounded bait fish. So it's an easy target for large mouth. They'll commit a lot of the times that they see it, as long as it's, you know, not in something crazy, they don't know what it is. Um, they'll commit onto it as a eating bite and they'll actually go up and try to eat it. So they'll be super aggressive on it and they'll get probably all three of these troubles in them at some point. Uh, the suspending one, that's when you'll, like I said earlier, you're looking for a sensitive rod because they'll tell them up and tail swipe it. They'll side swipe it. They're trying to disorient it because they see that it's a, uh, it's alert, right? So the reel in and of itself, I mean, the reason why it's such a, I mean, some people will be like, that's a really big combo. The reason why it's a big combo is because a, I like to throw these really far out there. I like to cover a lot of water with my jerk baits, especially right now. Um, you can throw more finesse techniques, but I'm still a power fisherman, even in the winter. There'll be times, you know, I'll sit down, I'll throw a Ned rig, of course, or I'll throw a jig around, see what I can get. But this is a great way to do some searching and see if they're on a reaction bite anyway. So now on that reel, I have 10 pound fluorocarbon, and this is the Sunline FC crank fluorocarbon. And what this does is unlike, you know, Sunline FC or, um, which like this is my normal fluorocarbon is Sunline Sniper, uh, Super FC Sniper. Um, but unlike Super FC Sniper, this fluorocarbon actually has a little bit of stretch to it. So when you set that hook on that fish, you're not pulling a kind of like a pure fluorocarbon with a zero stretch or a braid. It's giving you a little bit of give. So when you, when you pull that, I mean, that, that bait's still there. It's just now getting tight. And I got a little bit of stretch in there that kind of is a little bit forgiving for these treble hooks. So it's lets them really put pressure on the fish instead of pulling it straight out of its mouth. And I throw 10 pound on there because like I said, I like to chuck this thing out there. 10 pound likes to cast great. Um, so I'll chuck this thing out there. It doesn't really interfere with the action of my bait. So if I'm throwing a floater, they'll, it'll still want to float up. If I'm throwing a suspender, it'll still let it suspend. If I'm throwing a sinker uh, or a sinking uh, uh, jerk bait, it will, the jerk bait itself will sink. And I'm not worried about my line interfering with that. Sometimes with you, a lot of guys throw 12 pound, which is great. I threw 12 pound forever. Um, this was my jerk bait spool. It was bought to be a jerk bait spool, uh, spooled line. And now I'm finding I'm throwing 12 pound and stuff. If I'm fishing a lot more shallower, um, just because I can, that line's going to sink before my bait will, but that, that's a whole nother video. And I'll probably do a video on that too, but this is really the gear that I'm throwing it on. And it, it comes into handy. Like I said, everything kind of comes together. So the real speed, you can throw them on a five, four to one. If you really want to, or you can throw them on an eight to one. It just, you gotta monitor how much you're actually going down, but your rod is what's doing all that. So I would really recommend if you're getting a technique specific rod for jerk bait, make sure you get one that is super sensitive. So you can really feel that fish playing with it. And then you can get ready for the actual bite or the ambush of that, uh, that bait. So go ahead, uh, 
you know, we're going to be doing a lot more videos this com upcoming season. So you'll see me, you'll see some of the other pro staff guys talking about different techniques. Uh, a couple of us will be doing videos on tournaments we'll be in. I'll probably have some tournament footage out there. Don't know how much I'm going to be talking during that, but you'll I'll have some footage from a GoPro um, that you'll just be able to see the tournament, some fish tech catches, and then I'll kind of debrief my tournaments. I know a couple other guys will too. But these will be on Instagram like they are right now. And then some of the longer ones will be on our YouTube channel. So a lot of people don't know we have a YouTube channel, the 153 YouTube channel. Um, it'll be uh, linked in the description below and then a clickable link in the bio of our Instagram page. So feel free, go over there, give us a follow. It's free, doesn't cost anything. And I promise you'll get a lot of great knowledge from a lot of different guys. Um, some of our pro staff on there fished a lot of different things. So there's a few of us who fish kayak tournaments. There's uh, two of our guys who fish boat tournaments and bank tournaments. And then we have uh, Scott Knoll. He's a pro staff with 153, and he actually does uh, FLL, FLW tournaments uh, out of his boat. So I'm sure we'll see some more about him uh, later this coming season. So I'm sure you guys will like it. Go over, give him a follow. And as always, get ready for the bike. Get ready for the season. Hook him up and hook him often.